Hey guys, I hope you're having another beautiful day and making the most of the gift that we have, which is the present. So today is our first podcast that we're getting a video with my beautiful face, the head mindset coach, Julian Service, at your service. And we want to make sure you know who I am as we move forward in this process. Okay, so today's topic is all about how our mindset helps manage our mental health. Huge topic. Our mental health is critical to continue the long fight with COVID-19 and we gotta stay together during this process. Now, just so everyone knows, I'm not a clinical therapist. I'm only an experienced certified coach who recommends ways to improve mild symptoms. Anything more than that should be discussed with a psychiatrist or a doctor. So, to dive in, life naturally has its challenges with ups and downs but our mindset ultimately can flatten the curve to be more consistent and less mentally unstable. With the struggles of COVID-19 upon us, we have many new issues like lockdowns, job layoffs, and school closures that have created many more issues and mental health problems. These factors are out of our control, but the effect it creates is very difficult to ignore. Not being able to physically socialize with family and friends or even just staying busy and keeping your mind preoccupied with all the extra free time. Much of our mild symptoms of mental health is stemmed from our overall mindset and how we approach life. The main terms we often hear about is anxiety, depression, insomnia, and bulimia. These core issues typically have some prior experiences or conditioning that leads to either of them taking place or a combination of them arising. But before we get too far into anything diving into the mental health, let's make sure we understand what those terms really mean and how they apply to each of us, okay? So anxiety is our body's natural response to stress. It's a feeling of fear or apprehension of about what's about to come. Our sympathetic nervous system controls the release of hormones that signal stress, which then turns into anxiety. Many people associate nervousness with anxiety and usually overtakes us when an important event is coming or possibly when we're trying something out for the first time. The fear of embarrassment or failure tend to heighten our anxiety. Social conditioning has created this fear because we associate much of our identity with our peers or those who we want to be like. This pressure creates unnecessary worry that we shouldn't focus on but it's easier said than done. So, society has created so many standards that can be hard to live up to, and for this reason, many of us lack confidence or self-esteem, which makes it even tougher to succeed. When we understand the power of our mindset, we can take control of our perspectives and thinking patterns, which will lead to better mental stability. Remember, anxiety is natural and good. It reminds us of we are mortal and need to protect ourselves at all times. Healthy anxiety is important to stay alert and safe. However, too much of anything is good for nothing. Depression is a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Also called major depressive disorder or clinical depression, it affects how we feel, think, and behave and can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. Individuals may have trouble dealing with normal day-to-day activities, and sometimes people may feel as if life isn't worth living. But there is a wide spectrum of this health issue. But once again, if it is not diagnosed with chemical imbalances in the brain, potentially it is stemmed from past harsh experiences, grief, or environmental conditioning which for the most part is out of our control. Yet not letting it affect us is easier said than done. When we are focused too much on the past, we completely miss what's right in front of us. The misguided perspective will lead anyone into a negative place, as typically regret or pain is connected to this problem. When we understand the power of our mindset, we can take control of our perspectives and thinking patterns, which will lead to better mental stability and direction for our focus. 
Insomnia. This is a sleep disorder in which people have trouble falling and or staying asleep. The condition can be a short term, which is acute, or can last a long time, which is chronic. It may also come and go. Acute insomnia lasts from one night for a few weeks, and insomnia is chronic when it happens at least three nights a week for three months or more. Now, just like anxiety, insomnia is connected to our sympathetic nervous system. This is due to the body not being able to get out of fight or flight mode, which keeps adrenaline and mental stimulation ongoing. Typically, a person who struggles with insomnia also struggles with elevated anxiety. It's hard for them not to be connected. However, sometimes due to life's hecticness and strenuous demands, many people cannot turn off their minds and reduce the thinking or chatter in order to properly rest. Our parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for releasing hormones that allow for proper rest and digestion. But many people struggle with turning it on as they may not know how to tap into it. The most effective ways are meditation, exercise, nature walks, healthy food, and some more. For deeper understanding and tips on this topic, check out our blog, which is COVID and our sympathetic nervous system and tuning your bodily functions. So it's a great blog post we did a few weeks back. I highly recommend you go check it out, give it a read, and get a little more deeper perspective on how our sympathetic nervous system is so connected to our mental health. Okay, it's huge. Now, bulimia nervosa, which is the, the actual name for it in clinical sense, we know it as just bulimia. This is a serious, potentially life-threatening eating disorder. People with bulimia may secretly binge, which is eating large amounts of food with a loss of control over the eating uh, portion size, and then purging, which is trying to get rid of the extra calories in an unhealthy way. The issue definitely is created by society's standards of beauty and attraction. Unfortunately, the world is very competitive and many individuals get caught in the trap of wanting to compare and compete with high standards that frankly, even the people who are shown as the golden examples don't even live, live up to it. So majority of beauty or fashion magazines and publications are photoshopped and highly edited just to sell more copies for monetary goals. The idea of perfection is very skewed and it's all subjective. If we control our mindset, we will stay focused on the right aspects of life and our perspectives will be directed towards positivity and healthy growth. Changing the mindset will directly affect falling into this trap of an unhealthy eating disorder. So very important, really manage those things so that you can stay healthy and on track. Now, on my own life journey, I have experienced and been medicated for anxiety, depression, and insomnia. And at one point, it actually brought me to the brink of the extreme that forced me into a mental health ward for 30 days. But it was actually the best thing for me because it was the pullback on the arrow before getting slingshotted forward. It was a necessary part for my growth and forward development. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the experiences I had because it made me become exactly what I needed to be. A strong, passionate individual set out to teach and guide others from my mistakes using techniques that helped me conquer my mental health. The issues noticeably appeared when I had a tough time coping with sport injuries and failures from putting all my eggs in one basket and none of them hatching. This led me into a rabbit hole of negativity as I had put over 15 years of work into creating this dream of being an MLB Major League Baseball player. So I was fortunate enough to be drafted three times. I had the ability to go play Division I baseball in Louisiana. And I had some success along the way, you know, statistically, but I never really reached that potential of where I thought I could go. But in the process of pursuing professional sports, I lost sight of my true purpose and allowed my mindset to be affected consequently. 
I became very result-based, always focused on the future, and became very harsh on myself. These all combined created lots of anger and many emotional roller coaster days that created a big toll of stress and negativity. It's all a butterfly effect, which made me not the best teammate at times and a very moody individual when I failed because I knew I could have performed better. But I was not in control of my mindset and just figured it would all take care of itself. But that wasn't the case. What I was told by so many coaches and heard it from so many people along the way, just fake it until you make it. <laughs> Probably some of the worst advice I was ever given. Why? Because it made me try to be a copycat and it allowed me to keep working on my physical aspects of my performance and not paying enough attention to my mental health. Of course, as athletes, we do physical conditioning for mental toughness. And coaches always talk about the routine and the process and being in the moment, but it's mostly talk and not much of them really lead by example. So that's one thing in sports, you always tend to follow by example and sometimes along the way it happens. So they might've gave us the tips and, and things to said, but we get so caught up in the shuffle that we often don't really pay it no mind. But it's up to us to really figure it out. So physical conditioning can't give you positive self-esteem it can't give you that high confidence level and trust in yourself. It can only remind you that your body can endure more pain and it can deal with stress much more than we realized. So there's a little bit of difference between mental toughness from conditioning and then a mental health that is positive and highly favorable of high self-esteem that appreciate yourself, you trust yourself, you love yourself, you're not aggressive at yourself, you're not negative at yourself. You're focused on just enjoying what life has to offer right now and not just focused on tomorrow and go get this and go get the results. It's really more oriented in enjoying the process, which is huge. So to make that long story short, my experience has taught me to be much more conscious of enjoying the process and controlling what I can control. Staying positive, having fun, and being present in the moment. Not letting success get to my head and not let failure get to my heart. So that was huge, being able to let those go. And doing things for others, being a better teammate, right? Removing my ego, embracing the bigger picture, seeing that all my mental health issues were partially from some environmental conditioning, but mostly from my lack of care towards my mindset. So now we have a deeper understanding of what each term really entails, and a little bit of background of my experiences with each, Let's dive deeper into ways to improve and overcome these struggles that many of us are going through or have experienced. Hydration, huge, gotta get it. So nine ways to improve our mental health. Number one, meditation and yoga. Absolutely amazing. Meditation is known to involve proven calming breathing techniques that turn on our parasympathetic nervous system and gets the ball rolling in relaxing and reaching deep tranquility. Due to the brain waves that are turned on by meditation, it creates opportunity for healing, digestion, and rejuvenation. Meditation is key for slowing our thought process down or chatter, which eases stress and tension in the mind and body. Just 10 minutes a day can be truly remarkable as it brings us back to the present moment and when properly done, it allows the brain to release good endorphins that will boost our mood and bodily functions. So we had another blog a few weeks ago, which I recommend you go check out, why meditation is important and brain waves that we can tap into when we properly meditate. So a great read and some great tips on how this is gonna help you be more conscious, uplift that vibration, level up that lifestyle, and have a better positive mental health. Number two, absolutely huge. This is number one on the list with all our clients. It was the first thing I had to do when I was going through my process, and that is journaling. We need to create a visual awareness of our daily routine, and it can be an outlet for letting go of emotions. Writing down anything gives it much more power 
to truly manifest, but as well gives the ability to release negative emotions instead of just holding them in. It's always better to let it go than to just keep storing, storing it in because it becomes overwhelming at times and then it can become a big explosion, right? However, on the positive side, it is a way to keep track of your diet, your exercise, your mood, your gratitudes, and your habits. Being able to visualize and see the progress taking place is definitely a boost in staying on track and manifesting positive results. A great way action can take place in your routine is having that everyday reflection and meditation for about five to 15 minutes. And then journal one gratitude, one goal, and then one habit that you need to improve on. This consistently will start the day on the right foot and bring about more consciousness in your life. Being grateful creates perspective of positivity. Having a goal creates drive and determination to seize the day. And acknowledging one habit allows for improvement towards anything hindering your growth. So very important, you need to have a journal so you can keep track of everything and also release anything you wanna let go. Number three, we gotta be able to just get out in nature and embrace the beauty around us. Nature has the ability to de-stress and ground out negative energy. It is designed for it. It is proven that walking barefoot or even just being connected to the earth without something disturbing the energy will decrease anxiety and stress. This is because the earth has a grounding effect and we tend to be charged up with negative ions. These come from built up static electricity or technological devices, but when we touch the earth, it completely removes our stored up negative energies that may be causing overstimulation or feelings of unease. Many people enjoy camping because the benefits from unplugging and getting away from so much radio waves and Wi-Fi, it all has to be connected to that radiation that we're constantly around. So this eases the brain and allows for a deeper sense of relaxation. My experiences of camping have always been very refreshing. I actually always see it as a rewarding time for improving my aura and an ability for some fresh air and the sun. The sun's huge because it has natural radiation that boosts our immune system and actually gives us vitamin D, which is crucial for our immune system. But as well, it gives prana energy, which is that deep soul energy that we need from the sun. This is why on a cloudy day that feels so gloomy, you feel lazy, you feel like you don't wanna really do anything. But on those days where it's bright and sunny, you feel like there's so much to do, it's uplifting and energetic. And that's just those natural energies that we don't really see, but they're always there giving us that boost. Number four, reading books. Books are an amazing tool for learning and thinking differently. When we see things through someone else's perspective, it can create new ideas for how we approach whatever the topic may be. Understanding we will never know everything, never. But staying on the pursuit to maintain a growth mindset will continuously create more and more success. Reading 10 to 15 pages a day can go a long way in helping create more stillness in the body and mind. Plus, it helps develop patience. Reading is a great de-stressor that can turn off the mind from whatever it's thinking about and allow for better relaxation. Often people read before bed as it winds down the mind and preps the body for better rest. So reading a book keeps you developing, keeps that growth mindset, which we do have another blog about too. Go check out how you can develop that growth mindset, but it also gives a way to then calm your mind down and just get yourself ready for a better evening. Number five, exercise. Exercise naturally releases good endorphins and boosts our immune system functions. Cardiovascular health is vital for maximal physical ability and helps keep muscles and bones strong. Fitness allows for a release of stress as any unwanted emotions can be let go by moving weights or doing some cardio. 
many people associate exercise with a mental health boost because of the natural benefits. But as well, the stress relief that it creates from being able to just get all that energy into some weights or go run out the emotion. Enjoying some form of workout every day or at least three times a week will definitely create more benefits than just the aesthetics or fitness capacity. It creates a routine for uplifting the mind and body. For me, I've been a personal trainer for multiple years. I've seen firsthand what fitness can do for people and their mind and their mental health, and it is amazing. Just because of those natural hormones that get released, the feeling of seeing themselves looking better in the mirror, putting on some clothes that's a little bit trimmer, all that's a part of the process, but overall, just the energy levels that get boosted and their immune system functioning better. So it's crucial that you work on your cardiovascular health, your muscular ability, your mobility, your stability, and your flexibility, which all enhance your quality of living. So definitely get out there, ride your bike, push a skateboard, do whatever gets you going, gets that heartbeat working, get some work done. You can even do it around your house. You can lift so many things with just body weight, squats, lunges, push-ups. You don't even need that much equipment. It's just a matter of willpower and consistency. Number six is now the fuel are healthy foods. We need natural, organic, whole foods that are packed with the most nutrients that provide energy and enzymes that create a good gut health. Our gut is connected to our brain as serotonin is the hormone released when our gut is happy. Eating the right foods releases more serotonin, which uplifts our mood and physical abilities because of this. When we eat the correct rainbow of fruits and veggies, we intake vitamins and minerals that are vital for bodily functions and assisting in breaking down our big nutrients. Those are our fats, carbs, and proteins. In the synthesis of our macronutrients, we want to uptake as much of each as we can because this will ensure our meals are efficient and we will remain fuller for longer periods. This could be up to at least three to five hours before really hunger starts to hit again. If our gut health is off, it will create mood swings and heightened times of cravings. Mental health is deeply connected to our food because hunger or indigestion can create anger or pain. So how many times have you had a great meal and after you feel very at ease, very relaxed, very comfortable because the food is packed with good nutrients, good ingredients that is allowing the body to uptake what it needs and release that serotonin that tells the mind, we are good, we got what we needed. But if you had an upset stomach, I guarantee you weren't in a mindset that was happy or enjoying the process. So food is our fuel. We got to take care of the temple. So you want it to function at its highest capacity, fuel it with the right things and take care of it the proper way. All boost our mental health because of so many correlated hormones and things that the body is related to with exercise and nutrition. And of course, make sure you're getting enough hydration because getting at least two to four liters of water and even more if you're doing a lot of exercise or in a lot of heat is necessary because our body's about 60 to 70% water and we gotta keep replenishing that H2O. So it's crucial, keep getting that hydration, get that good nutrition and keep staying fit and active. Number seven, we gotta have some hobbies that are de-stressors for us. Hobbies create a great distraction for the mind and focusing on something else that we can enjoy. This could be art, music, crafts, games, or anything that suits your nature. But the power of a hobby is amazing. Many of us have stressful careers that sometimes can be overwhelming. Having a go-to hobby that tunes out all the noise or stress and just allows for some peace and tranquility is very necessary. Being able to share a laugh with family and friends or just be in complete silence for the time being is all a part of relaxing and boosting our mental health. We take for granted doing the things we really enjoy, but try your best to schedule time into your routine for those activities that you really enjoy. For me, I enjoy playing guitar or trying to produce some music as it gives me that joy of hearing something new or playing along with my favorite songs. 
This whole process is what gets me to really let go and go into my own little bubble and feel that boost of mental health from it. So that is my hobby. I hope that you find yours because it's very crucial to have those things that can just let go of that stress, flip the switch on the mind and do something different for the time being. Number eight, positive support team. So you want to make sure you always have things that you can do with others. And right now it's been tough with COVID to be able to stay around that circle of friends or family that really do give you that support. But for the most part, it's always better to do things with others. Have a team that builds you up and supports you in tough times is definitely helpful in staying positive and maintaining focus on bigger goals. We as humans are meant to be social creatures. So our psyche and mental health are deeply connected to everything in our social relationships. If we have positive people around us, then we will be more inclined to be positive and vice versa. If we have negative people around us, we'll be more inclined to be negative. Your tribe is your vibe. It doesn't have to be many individuals as typically we may only have one or two close friends that really look out for our best interest. But having a few upbeat sound individuals will be beneficial for maintaining positive mental health. So huge. Have those people around you who are going to keep you accountable, keep you positive, and keep wanting to see you grow to be better and better. That is awesome when you have those people around you that can be that support team. So always find those key individuals that are going to boost you up. And number nine, have consistent preparation and planning. Very important. To reduce anxiety or stress, take more time to prepare and thoroughly create plans that set you up for success. A big reason why we give ourselves more anxiety is due to the uncertainty of what's to come next. Creating a thought out plan allows for more efficient behaviors and more effective actions. Reduce time and effort by creating a smooth routine that helps keep you positive and relaxed. Unexpected things will happen, but having the right preparation in place will allow for smooth adjustments and quicker adaptations to ensure positive outcomes. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Take pride in preparation so you can live and work smoother. Super important. Set yourself up with good routines, good plans, schedule out your day, week, month, and keep yourself on track so that when unexpected things come your way, you can make those adjustments and just efficiently go around the corner and make whatever adaptation you need to see the goal still come to fruition. So it's all about having that preparation so that you can succeed. So these nine ways to boost our mental health are definitely key components of how I enhanced my mental health to a better place and am still consistently able to maintain that positive lifestyle. In our mindset system, we apply all of these techniques and much more to all of our clients as they are proven to be successful. It takes time and effort for a smooth routine to become second nature. But if you are willing to consistently try and keep putting forth the effort, you will definitely see results. Level one of our mindset challenge applies much of these techniques and is guaranteed to boost your mental health. The key is how willing are you to try something new and stick with it. If I would have known these things when I was going through my sports career, maybe things could have turned out differently. But here nor there, the key is having those experiences brought me to where I am now so I can help more people. So maybe it was all meant to happen, right? Nobody really knows. So to save you time and agony, learn from my experience, learn from my knowledge that I've taken from this, and try out these techniques. The release of our mindset app is coming this June and it will have everything and more to keep you thriving and leveling up your life. So keep an eye out for that. We will be letting you know when that's launching and it'll have everything we give to our clients and a little bit more if you tune in for subscriptions so you can get the most of that app. So hopefully this could give you more insight 
on the deep connections between our mindset and our mental health in hope that working on these aspects will give your life a boost or at least turn it for the better. In hope that life is getting better for you and seeing that this is always a process, it's a huge journey, but finding those ways that keep you positive and grateful to seize another day are so vital. Challenges and stress will always come our way, but how we handle it and control what we can control will ultimately dictate how we manage our health. Focus on that 10%. That's all we can control. And watch the 90% that we can't control start to manifest in your favor. For more about self-control and all how we can really dive into that 10%, check out our blog in the importance of self-control and 15 ways to develop a stronger mindset. That'll be a great read to understand the importance of that discipline and control and how that will strengthen your mindset to level you up. So like always, I want to see everyone keep developing themselves to that next level. And for anyone who's new to the, the content we're putting out, make sure you subscribe to our channel, get those notifications going and keep working on yourself. So as always, stay strong, stay consistent, stay healthy, and keep developing yourself. Level up.